board. All right, it is Monday, March 30th, and I'm coming to you with a video that will go along with our fables. So if you have opened up your Google Classroom, I would like for you to find your copy online of the wind and the sun. If you're using the packet that you picked up, you can pull that out of your fables packet and find it. This is going to be our fable for this morning. All right, let's make that a little bit bigger for me anyway. Hope for you too. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read aloud the story. And you are going, you can follow along. And then at the end, go back to your Google Classroom, find your Google form for your reading response for the wind and the sun, fill it out, make sure you hit complete and send it back to me. If you don't have internet, you're obviously not watching this. And <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this. Then you'll just be doing it in your packet, taking a picture and sending it back to me. All right, give me just a minute. I'm going to pull this up in just a moment on our uh, share screen so that you can look along and we can see the words together. Now, as we begin fables, let's remember a few things. One, let's remember fables are fiction, which means they are not true. Fables are actually our oldest form of storytelling. Way before people wrote down stories, they would sit around and they would tell stories orally. That means by mouth. And through the thousands and thousands of years that these stories have been told, some of the details may have changed in the story, but one thing that never changes is the lesson or the moral. Fables always have a lesson. And something is going on in the story that people can relate to, something they have to overcome that normal people can relate to. And they use the fables as a way to help learn how to take care of things in these situations. Most of the time in fables, the characters are animals and they speak. But not always. In fact, not in this one. In The Wind and the Sun, our characters are going to be two forces of nature, the wind and the sun. Now, when something that's not human has human qualities, we call that personification. So I want you to listen to what are some things that the wind and the sun do in our story that they really can't do. It's things that people would do. Let's listen for that personification. All right, I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to pull this up on my screen, and we are going to read aloud the wind and the sun. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you can see the passage on your screen. I am going to track my print and I invite you to read along with me. The wind and the sun. Long ago, the north wind and the sun argued over who was the most powerful. Of everything in the sky, the north wind boasted, I am the strongest. Oh, don't be so sure, replied the sun. The sky is full of powerful forces. It may even be that I am stronger than you. The North Wind sneered. Ha, huh, let's put this to the test. As they looked down, they saw a man strolling along a country road. Whoever makes that man remove his coat will be declared the winner and will hold the title of the most powerful force in the sky, stated the North Wind. It was agreed upon and the contest began at once. First, the north wind blew with all its might. It tried and tried to blow the coat off the man. Each time the wind gusted, the man pulled his, the man pulled his coat tighter around himself. This continued for one hour, at which time the north wind was completely out of breath. Watch and learn, the sun said with a smile. The sun sent a warm and gentle rays down to where the man was walking. First, the man unbuttoned his coat. Before long, he removed it entirely. From that day on, the sun has been known as the most powerful force in the sky. Now, it tells us that the moral of the story is, greater gains are to be found through kind acts than through force. I want you to put that into your own words. So let's take a few minutes. Let's talk about some things from our passage. First off, who were the main characters in our passage. What were some of the things that the characters did that showed personification? Things they did that normally 
a person would do. Why were they having the challenge in the first place? What were they trying to prove? What did the wind do to try to win the challenge? What did the sun do to try to win the challenge? Now think about how you put the moral of the story in your own words. And when you're ready, I want you to click on over to your Google Docs and I want you to answer your questions. You can see them here on your page, but I've written them in a form you can actually type into. All right, boys and girls, when you're done, make sure you hit complete and you share it back with me. I look forward to um, seeing what you come up with. All right, until next time, I'm gonna log off and join me on Tuesday for a new fable.